fictional item but still works as a rev counter except that the 7000 rpm is somewhat covered and now everything got covered That's pretty brutal. I like the red bar there where that goes down. And for the record, I turned off the heads up display. I think that's distracting. Maybe I have it on too strong, maybe that's why. And this autonomous driving on M5, as I said when I drove the E63S. Formatic, you really need you really need this autonomous driving on on these super highly powerful cars because it's a license saver. That's pretty convenient as well with the uh, traffic completely autonomous now this couldn't be the smartest road to shoes since we got stuck in a queue let's gonna see how My little consumption is still quite low. I'm kind of impressed by this efficient dynamics. Pretty good average, last like 550 kilometers. But I'm gonna do another, take another way, cause this way really sucked. What a day. 110 kilometers per hour is 107 GPS. My average of today's adventures has been this. Not that bad considering we've done like 15, 20 launch controls. Yes, it's thirsty when you give gas, of course, but you can when you just put in 110 km per hour, do actually 0.9 liter average consumption. I actually killed the air conditioning right now. Okay, not that good. Play 
this to stop. Anyway, um, Started driving half past seven. It kind of makes sense. I do, however, want to reset this. And I believe it's, I mean, at 110 km per hour, we could be stuck at 0.9. Liters per 10 kilometers, and I have fully autonomous driving now, which is, I mean, as I said on the Mercedes, it's a license saver. So let's see if he brakes here. That little car, yes, it does. And I think it's enough to have the feet on like this. Now it's 0.75, a bit too suspicious low, I would say. I mean, I would say just cruising like this, then the Panamera Turbo S takes the cake because it's recharging the battery pack, etc. But I was only able once to do 3.2 seconds 0 to 100 kilometers per hour on the Panamera Turbo S but in the M5 we did it all day every day at 23 degrees Celsius as well it was not uh, I did it last night as well and I think the best time was 10.4 0 to 200 kilometers per hour which is unheard of, I think, for this, this large car. See, 0.92 per 10 kilometers. We're gonna see. So, and the beautiful BMW M5 rev counter turns into a huge navigational symbol. And I'm used to autonomous driving. I can choose the distance, the car in front, take that. But it's so unbelievably relaxing with autonomous driving. I mean, the cars that need autonomous driving the most, those are in fact these super high power sedans because it's a super lifesaver when you've been driving really active driving. Uh, you just want somebody else to take over or somebody else to think take care of the speed limit, take care of the distance for the car in front of you and so you could just relax and then with a touch of a button like double press on this one you're back in action with M dynamic mode and four wheel drive sport and you can do like basically drifts huge controllable drifts at the touch of a button and almost to 0 to 200 km per hour in 10 seconds flat 10.4 is my personal record and, and just every time do 3.2 3.2 200 kilometers per hour so uh, so it's kind of a nice thing I just push this button to have full all on whoops <coughs> that was uh, not so smart 
I had autonomous driving, but you overreact. Yeah, maybe not so smart. Filming too much. Anyway, that's all for now. Time to focus on driving. The, the problem is you, you get too lazy with autonomous driving. See, the white lines are not perfectly clean here, so... You should think that it's... Uh, things can happen. And you see now the 8000 RPM disappeared. It's funny, when you rev into it, it doesn't fly away. The rev counter does not come back, which is somewhat annoying. And you can hear that the dunk still have comfort. So, I mean, it's a bit harsh, but still it's not on the, on the highest uh, or on, on the most sporty setting. So that's all for now. I don't know what happened there with the light anyway. Best take out as the stats to see it on the on a diagram as well quite nice on the M5 is that the whole rev see the consumption is pretty alright below 0.9 liters per 10 kilometers um, if you put in a destination the RPM counter actually disappears kind of like the Panamera counter driving disappear. Maybe I was blipping too much on the iDrive. So you can see here a little small navigation comes up. Here. No, there. Totally autonomous driving is really nice to have. You just put in the speed limit, 110, not the cars electronic limited at 305 kilometers per hour. And it's nice to see that we have efficient dynamics control display here that informs us that the engine is running.
110 kilometers per hour and we have an average of 0 0.8 kilometers per hour I mean that's not bad for this large car you can just cruise however it's a waste of miles it's fun more fun to put it in two wheel drive and DC off program with this button and go all out but I mean when you've done that a full day you just want to be have a rest and then this consumption is not bad it's just important to let the park um, or the cruise control and autonomous driving work do the job by itself and then I mean the total mileage of one tank is not bad it's almost 700 kilometers and I can't remember last time an M5 had that large range actually and I wonder what average you get if you start driving really actively but 1.5 liters per 10 kilometers I assume see here we have this little navigation information here and we can also probably change it to a map but that's first when we should turn with the car, I assume. Yeah, because now my little rev counter disappeared. Oh, now it came back. Uh, so, um, I mean, wow. It can really... Take it easy with this. And my average over all these days is this, so that's a bit higher, but uh, it's very comfortable saving your license and everything, just letting the autonomous driving do its work. German? car in front of us anyway that's all for now so the rev counter disappeared again but navigation is on stop set Stockholm so yeah, I lost it there, it didn't, could not turn. 90 degrees. For sure. It still is relaxing with autonomous driving. funny that the needle goes above the ready text. Just 
disable the autonomous driving and why not put on autonomous driving it has a hard time reading it now it's not engaged to green could it be too low speed Now it's green for some reason. People like the corner. Here you cannot do a U turn, you have to do it a bit later on. People driving complete snail speed. It's funny to see a regular 5 series when you're like in the uber super mega overkill M5 competition. Okay, he's going there. I'm not. I'm going this way. I need to go to the right here. Damn. A bit crowded, yes. This is so screwed up, this part of Stockholm. So, speed, what to say there, the rev counter went away again, tourists everywhere. Somebody stated, like, what is Stockholm for? Is it for tourists or for the people? After a few runs, it's pretty hot. And it's 23 degrees outside. Snapper rocks blue in the sun. 4K, 60 frames per second. And the color still looks awesome. I was about to turn around there, but no, it's not. It was not worth it. So now the sun went away. It might come back. This is a lot of pigeons or whatever. Should have like pigeon shooting. So, I mean, in dull, it's kind of the worst color. In the night, it looks just completely amazing. Exhaust button pressed. Lights on. And people working endless with these renovations. Money is cheap.
so let's see it from a distance. Damn, the M5 looks low from this angle. Super stealthy. This looks a bit lower with a dark diffuse diffuser, but I mean it kind of reminds me when you know as like on the berlingo there when you have like this unpainted bumper even though it's painted in black it's still somewhat um, yeah it looks not well Okay, I was thinking I should give a little additional view on the M5 competition in Snapper Rocks Blue, which amazingly enough is a standard M5 color. Actually, I went was first on the M2, I assume. Anyway, I wanted to film a little bit in the sun and I think it's actually a great color for the M5 it's so sporty and it's I mean it could have been a gray dark Donington thing boring gray instead of it's a super sporty color that looks like most people hate but I just think it's lovely just because it's special and when driving the m5 i have a habit of having the headlights on this gorgeous led intelligent headlights see the dark thing here uh, is that like a option and uh, um, love these seats, however, quite firm. And for best sound in the car, you have the seats folded. That's a trick I learned from old M5 E39 times. Of course now the sun went down, but I'm gonna film it from the front from another angle. <laughs> 